Coming up on this episode of Outlook TV, Bimini's on 4th Avenue Kits, a new lesbian safe space in Vancouver. Toronto's downtown soccer. Club 200 in Winnipeg, and much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. We'd like to thank the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh Nations for the honour and privilege to film this episode of Outlook TV on their traditional unceded lands. Outlook TV is the queer news magazine show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. And we're going to kick it off in Toronto with a little downtown soccer. Yes, it's all-inclusive, fun, recreational games with balls. Love Sounds it. great. <laughs> Hello everyone, salut tout le monde. Summer is in full swing and what better way to enjoy it than to play soccer. Downtown Soccer Toronto is the ideal co-ed league. Let's go meet them. The purpose of DST is to offer a safe space for everyone that has experience or not to come play soccer among their peers, their queer friends and just have a great time. DST is funded by multiple different sponsors. The diversity of our league is growing with time. Every year we see people from different spectrum of the gender, different spectrum of their sexuality. I think it really well represents the diversity of what our queer community should be. At the beginning of the year, we have a skill assessment that's gonna be over two days. And then after that, we will be creating teams the most equitable possible by the skill level of every players. The most important thing is to have a safe space to be and exercise. I've been playing since I was the age of six. Uh, I played throughout my whole year and I also played semi-professional in Portugal for a year. This will be my third year playing in the league. Um, I played twi uh, one indoor league and three outdoor seasons. I joined this league because I wanted to be playing in an environment where I can be myself and also meet other people that also has a passion for the game. Playing with ladies is awesome because it's good to see that they're not afraid to come and play out here and show the world that anybody can play with anybody. This is my first year playing on the team and in the league and I found it online and with my partner we are playing together. And I do really enjoy being in the co-ed league because we get to see different skill level and just meet new people all together. I've been a player since 2005. Um, I joined the league originally because I wanted to um, find ways to uh, be amongst gay men but in a healthy situation, a healthy environment that's not just around based around hooking up and meeting and sex, so that's why, and I wanted to get some exercise. I played in the league for about six years. I wanted to find a queer community, gay community, in which to play and enjoy soccer. I went to Google and I searched up gay soccer in Toronto because I moved to Toronto about seven years ago, and Downtown Soccer Toronto was the first one that popped up, so I just filled out the registration information form on the website. I joined the league about four years ago. I was looking up uh, queer leagues to play in in Toronto. I was just moving to the city um, and I was actually looking to join the volleyball league and I saw that there was a soccer league when I just googled it and soccer is my favorite sport so I decided to go with uh, downtown soccer Toronto. I love soccer so much so it's definitely for the exercise for me. It's definitely to play the sport but um, coming out as gay and wanting to find that community that is a very close second is meeting all these wonderful people. Play with women on the field is incredible. Um, they belong here just as much as anyone else does and uh, sharing the field with them is awesome. They they have a passion and we all get to go out there and have a great time. I was a player first, then I became a referee. I used to play for the Ontario Soccer League okay. and I also played at DST. I have been doing refereeing for more than 20 years. I joined the league because I'm part of the community. The season starts in May and ends at the beginning of October. Well, that was very informative. Wishing the very best to all the players going to Guadalajara for gay games. Andre Tardif in Toronto for Outlook TV. Now we're going to check in with Vancouver's Pride Festival at a new location this year. New venue, new energy, love it. It's Pride Week here in Vancouver and the Vancouver Pride Festival has a new schedule and a brand new location here at Concord Pacific Place. Let's go check it out. An artwork um, which shows the state of, uh, of homophobia worldwide. 
It's a dress made out of all the flags from countries where LGBTIQ plus people are criminalized. It's living artwork. As soon as a country decriminalizes, uh, we take out that country's flag and replace it with a rainbow flag. So it's a living artwork. The baby couldn't decide what to be. Boy or girl, bird or fish, cat or rabbit, tree or star. So I'm thrilled to be here today with the Storytelling with Drag Queens Foundation, reading books to everyone at Pride and sharing the joy of storytelling. I'm one of the owners of Tantra Fitness and we specialize in aerial and pole classes. And we have all, not just aerial and pole, we have all kinds of different classes that you can do for stretching and for flexibility. We do bungee fit classes, uh, something for everybody at the studio. About a 45 minute performance with two of my lovely dancers, Ikwe and Jojo from the House of LaDouche, doing a big, huge mismatch of fabulous pride numbers to get the crowd feeling the spirit of pride at this lovely festival site. So I feel wonderful being here. We're making ribbon wands and we're doing them in all the identity flags. So you can make a wand to represent yourself or someone you love or a group that you feel is underrepresented. Uh, let people customize it. So if you wanted to put two of these identity flags together, that's good too. Then you choose the color of bell and the color of pin and we put it all together for you and then you have a, a nice reminder of the day but also something great once the music starts playing. You can see people waving them around. We are an organization uh, including pilots, uh, flight attendants, uh, mechanics, uh, flight enthusiasts and uh, we come together to support LGBTQ community in aviation and do advocacy for the community and also create support. I'm here with Dirt Squirrel. We are a local Vancouver company that produces um, bamboo underwear, fabulous fans, different sources of apparel, and we're at Vancouver Pride at the Concord Festival today. We have two favorite fans. One is this witchy one right here, and then one's a little more uh, censored, but it's the gold one down there. Punk Rock Pastries is a bakery in North Burnaby. Uh, we are known for our adult cookies as well as our horror-themed things that we do around Halloween. Um, our penis cookies in particular are what people tend, tend to come in through the door for. And our fanny fruits are also very popular. So today I'm representing and selling my art. I am a traditional painter, so I create paintings that depict queer love, inclusivity and body positivity and sex positivity. Um, a lot of it is sapphic representation, which we don't get to see a lot in visual arts. So yeah, that's pretty much my entire brand. I created a series connecting roots and sea creatures and the human body all into one organism to um, express reconnecting to nature. It's my passion, so that's why I want to share it with you and uh, connect with people through the process. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt at the Vancouver Pride Festival 2023. We're going to have to take a little break now. The sun is so bright, i got to go get my shades. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. From one Pride Festival to another, we're headed to Winnipeg. We're at the Forks in Winnipeg celebrating the Pride Festival. Two days filled with events and vendors. Let's go check it out. Well, tell us a couple of things that you have in the festival. So we have three stages this year. We have our main stage, we have our community stage. Our community stage has Saturday programming by our Indigenous partners, Two Spirit Manitoba, and on Sunday by Kupak Winnipeg. And then we have our kids stage that actually had our headliner today, Al Simmons. 100% volunteer. Our executive team right now to get this festival happening this year is averaging about 30 to 40 hours a week. Our volunteer team this year to put on the festival and our, all of our festivities put in about 50,000 volunteer hours. You see the hate from the U.S. come up into Canada. We are very big on, you know what, hate doesn't belong in Canada, hate doesn't belong here. So we've been really working to with all of our partners to show why hate isn't welcome here, how our community partners work and how amazing Winnipeg is compared to the rest of the world, but also the rest of Canada. We're a small, big city. We have over 100,000 individuals that identify as part of the queer community just in Winnipeg alone. So the collective uh, LGBTQ to Manitoba is a, a French language organization uh, in Manitoba. Um, we are, um, we were created in 2019. We wanted to know more about the needs of the members of our community. So. To do that correctly, we decided to work with researchers from the University of St. Boniface. With them, we initiated and conceived a, a research project, and now we've published the results, and we're going on with further 
uh, studies uh, to find out what the needs of the young people are, because the first time around, you have to be 18 years and over to participate. And they said, that's not fair. So now we did now this year, uh, 14 to 18 year olds. And it's actually young people themselves that uh, conceive the study. Uh, we have another one that's going to be launched uh, this fall on obstacles to parenting. Uh, for members of our community and then uh, following that we want to do one on the needs of elderly members of our community so the reason we do research is to get knowledge to inform uh, policy and practice in uh, health and social services so what we want to do is have knowledge in place so that we have policies that will be uh, adapted to the needs of the members of our community and uh, especially members we're because we're not only members of the lgbt community but of the francophone community so we're a non-profit uh, social enterprise that handles food security in north winnipeg and beyond so we primarily work out of the north end point douglas and downtown but we also service communities all over manitoba depends where the need is so we started in 2021 we incorporated as an indigenous-led nonprofit that is creating less barriers for people helping break barriers for employment and also providing, a, we're up to 28,000 meals a month now for community. Uh, what is Two Spirit Winnipeg? Um, it's an organization uh, for LGBTQ and Two Spirit people, and we welcome all identities, all people, all sexualities, and we're a very welcoming space, and we do a lot of ceremony within the community, and this year we're having our first annual Sundance, Two Spirit Sundance. So that is happening in August and yeah, we're here and we're proud and we're loud and we're having a blast. From the Forks, Winnipeg, my name is T for Outlook TV. And now we're off to Edmonton to check out with the Fruit Loop Society. They're a non-profit event organizer who's been putting on events for the queer community for many, many times. We are at the Arts Barns in Edmonton tonight. We're here for the 10 year anniversary of Fruit Loop. They're a not-for-profit that has made this city more queer inclusive and queer friendly. I'm so happy to be here at Fruit Loop. Oh my gosh, we are all long time attendees of Fruit Loop. Much love to all of you. Congratulations. Holy shit, 10 years. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Go Fruit Loop. Co creator of Fruit Loop, and I cannot believe we're standing here today, this monumental occasion. And I just can't believe we came so far. Uh, and, you know, this grassroots organization transformed into political rally. It's wild. It's to make a place for folks who need their rights grown and protected and, and, and lived to actually be the ones doing it. And that's so why it's so been amazing because they have uh, lifted up and 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 uh, amplified queer culture and and entertainment and fun. Quite honestly, they've raised money for organizations that and people that really need support. But they've also just created pride 365 days a year. involved in the preliminary meetings. Uh, I think they say OG now. And I've actually got the OG shirt on that's a vintage just like me. It's been the 10th anniversary of Fruit Loop. This is the 25th anniversary of equality rights for gay people here in Alberta. Fruit Loop, let me hear you! And I remember Fruit Loop feeling like a place that I could just waltz in, say hi to new friends, say hi to old friends. And it was the place where I could feel like I was queer, I was here, and I had nothing to feel. So the first two-spirited MLA to walk through the doors of the legislature. We're seeing an uptick in hate in rural settings. A lot of folks that come to the cities uh, flee a lot of violence and a lot of hateful uh, rhetoric that are in these rural communities. And we need to make sure that they're represented and have a voice in the legislature, not only for the folks that are in urban settings, but also in those rural communities. They might possibly have heard of the amazing Janice Zerwin. Um, I've had the honor, the privilege of going to a number of Fruit Loop events over the years. And uh, I can tell you, it's just so exciting to be to be a part of this community and the work that they've done uh, in Edmonton and across the province to build community uh, and just to really uplift all members of the 2S LGBTQ plus community is just so inspiring. Self, where I was new to the city and I didn't know how to get involved. And I just say, seek out community right that's that's what i did i wasn't even queer when i first moved back to back to back to edmonton but i found for me i found a political party the ndp 
uh, where their values aligned with mine and I just started getting more and more involved. And it was actually through the NDP that I met a number of members of the queer and trans community too, right? So it's kind of neat in a, in a city like Edmonton, even in a city like Calgary, where once you start to meet some communities, you'll see how the communities are so interconnected, if that makes sense. Amazing event this was and I can't tell you the amount of queer history in this room and what this organization does for this province and for this city. This is Patrick Massey for Outlook TV in Edmonton, Alberta. We're going to have to take another break now. I'm not allowed to wear shades on the camera, so I'll just keep squinting. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. This next story is about new queer space in Vancouver. The lesbians have a queer space. It's about time. Hello, viewers, and thanks for joining us. My name is Emily Ann Fraser. In case you haven't noticed, we've lost a few queer friendly spaces here in Vancouver, like Odyssey, Honey, Lotus, and Oasis, to name a few. Well, it is my pleasure to bring you some good news. Bimini's in Vancouver is now a queer space. Follow me inside. Everyone's welcome. Well, being queer myself, when I created this as a queer space, the first thing is that coming from my side, it's going to be a safe space for all the entire queer community. Its challenges have been many. I would say, like, from the beginning of my thought to convert this into a queer bar, everyone was like, no, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. It's not a business move. I'm like, I need to do this for the community. I will see if I'm successful or not, but then if the entire community is going to support me, I know I'm going to be successful. It's a 360 degree turn. What Bimini's used to be and now what it is now and what it's going to be. House of Queer or how we call it HOQ, is a rebranding of Bimini's. We launched it on 29th of June as a yacht party. It's for every person who identifies, who is a part of the community, who is a queer or they know queer or their allies. It's for everyone. And we are having our first Pride Fest starting from 3rd. In the day, it's going to be a queer karaoke by Lola. And in the night, we'll have a Trans Futures fundraiser hosted by Xanax. And then the next day on 4th, well, our signature HOQ Yacht Party. Uh, and then after party at Bimini's, of course. On the 5th, we will start the Saturday with Drag Brunch hosted by Xanax and our lovely guests with them. By 4 p.m., we will be launching Love and Her. It's for all the women who loves women. All-inclusive space for all the women. And we will have an aqua party outside our patio. And then in the, in the night, it will turn from 9 p.m. until close. We will have a club night, again, Love and Her. And the best part is we are not going to charge people for cover charges for the, for the club nights trying to establish by HOQ and Lavender and many more events to have a place where people don't feel pressured by the economy. Well, there you have it. Uh, it's, sometimes it's the small victories, although this one doesn't feel so small. Thank you, Bimini's, for fighting the good fight. I'm Emily Ann Fraser. You're watching Outlook TV Vancouver. We're headed to Winnipeg now to check in on Club 200. Yes, uh, from one queer space to another. Club 200 has been serving the queer community there for m over 30 years. We are at Club 200, Winnipeg's longest running queer owned community bar and restaurant. Let's go inside and find out more about them and how they serve their community. Tell us about the owners of uh, Club 200. So it's a queer-owned establishment. Um, it's owned by Alan Morrison and Joel Sorbet. Uh, they're partners in real life as well as business partners as well. And, and from my understanding, it's been here for 35 years in this location. B12. B12. I've been here at Club 200 for 25 years. I'm in my 25th year of performing drag. And so we had a celebration of that um, 
uh, a couple months ago, and yeah, it's been great. It's an amazing. It's an amazing place to be. It's got a good spirit. People are friendly. It's a really community environment, and I think it's because of the different people we have here and the diversity of people that we have here that really makes it the place that it is. Club 200 is in its 35th year. They were established in 1988 in this location and in this space. It's looked a little different. At one time, they used to have pink walls and uh, sponge painting on one side, but. It's changed quite a bit and um, the furniture has changed, everything else, and a lot of the staff, of course. But we still have a lot of our people that come back and, and visit, especially during this time of year. It's an, uh, an owned club by a couple. We didn't have a board, you know, so decisions that were being made were made through them. They're very smart and business savvy. And I think in each decision that they make, they look at the family that they're supporting, which is the different employees that work here. We've got a catering service that operates out of here. We've got our bar and there's always things going on. So Club 200 has been fabulous in sort of allowing us to use their space when we've needed to host events. We've hosted a number of events here. So each year during Pride, we run a uh, derby. And so this year it's a dice derby. So the members who had signed up and friends and affiliates, they came to Club 200 to sign up this morning. And then they took a ride along the northern shore of Lake Winnipeg and stopped at various other queer-friendly establishments and then rolled the dice for their game and then returned here to finish off the dice rolling to see who wins the cash pot and as well of course we're holding a silent auction to raise funds all of the funds raised here today for this particular event is going towards our pride fund for 2024 we like to hand out things at the parade as well as at a community booth on the sunday after the parade our thing is we often give out silicone bracelets uh, last year we just had our normal colors just to represent dob and then this year we uh, decided to pick the trans colors and say that we are sisters, not sisters. From Winnipeg, Manitoba, my name is T for Outlook TV. That is all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV, but we'll be back before the sun stops shining. And while you're enjoying the sun, why don't you check us out on all our social media platforms, or better yet, volunteer with us. We are an awful lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. Stay, Stay proud, proud, Canada. Canada.